Да. So. Good evening, sir. Very good evening, to all of you. Yeah. Good evening, all uh, my dear uh, participants for the program. So it's really my distinguished pleasure and honor to host uh, Honorable Mr. Justice Kurin Joseph, the former judge of the Supreme Court, for this program. Uh, sir, uh, you have been, uh, you know, blessing the virtual law school since beginning. So you know about our journey as such. And, but for the participants, I must tell them that, uh, you know, that ever since I started conceiving a thought about the virtual law school, so Justice Joseph has been supporting me with the idea that how I should uh, be moving forward, has guided me and uh, most importantly been giving me a lot of encouragement that uh, not to, uh, you know, think about any kind of negative issues in, in this journey, which is full of challenges that I have taken up on myself and sir was also kind enough to join us for the inaugural program and today it's again my uh, honor to host sir for a reason that uh, it's a specialized program of uh, professional legal uh, education course for 30 hours course for a lot of professionals who also come from non-legal background and they should have a very good idea about the uh, legal issues in any legal system and to all the participants to tell you that uh, sir has been part of some of the very major judgments of the country like triple talaq case that you all are aware about then review of nagra judgment then coal scam case and uh, as much as i re recall since i worked in the supreme court when sir was uh, on the bench that uh, honorable justice joseph is one of the few judges in the list of 10 top judges in the supreme court who have authored maximum judgments in the court and uh, as interestingly, one of the issues that I should also put forth about sir's conviction on some of the social issues that, as I recall, sir, in eight, around over 18 years of your career as a judge, you have not given any judgment on the death penalty side, right? So that, that, that's because of your belief system in that particular you know, issue, which you have always uh, kept uh, very loud and clear as a message. So, sir, as uh, you have known, that this has been the journey that we started uh, over a month ago. And from 27th of uh, April, we began our classes. So the pro bono edition went on for a good six weeks with five hours lectures a day and six days a week. And they've, around 600 students have joined in this movement and have got benefited. And now we have shifted to something called as a low bono model, where again, uh, which is going to start uh, a little later in June, and the idea is, as you are aware, again, to bring down the cost of legal education. And uh, probably these schools and colleges may not be able to open up that kind of facility to as many students as it is required. So we are trying to fill in that gap. And uh, you will be sort of very surprised that I've kept the fee in low bono actually to be uh, something which is quite affordable as 750 rupees per subject. And, you know, for three months, and which, of course, will be taught by all the professors of NLUs and some of the, you know, lawyers friends. So that's the kind of affordability, affordability that I've tried to enhance for all the law students, irrespective of the fact that they come from any kind of, you know, law school, any city, anywhere. Although I am still facing a lot of challenge with regard to the digital divide that we have, but that's beyond my comprehension, my control as well. So I am trying to do whatever justice I can in my role to reach out to the maximum number of students and also working on the sidelines with some of the agencies. How can we sort of you know, address this digital divide uh, subject? So this was about our journey sir, throughout uh, as of now. And my dear students and participants, uh, as I did send an instruction, uh, instruction note to everyone, the session is going to be interactive. And you were all uh, apprised about the subject matter of the lecture today. So you can, through your video conferencing mode, in an exclusive session today, interact with Sir on this very important issue of public interest litigation that we will learn from Sir now that what goes behind the judicial you know, bench, that how do judges look at it? It's one, one kind of thought we know academically as a professor. You know as the students. We all learn about, you know, that there is uh, locus standi nahi hai. You know, now we can all file PUBG IAL, so and so forth. We keep reading in the newspaper. 
बट जज कैसे देखते हैं पी को यू नो क्या क्या उसमें ऐसे इंपॉर्टेंट इश्यूज हैं जहां उन्हें लगता है कि नहीं ये वर्दी नहीं है या ये वर्दी है यू नो दिस इज वॉट रियली रिक्वायर्स यू नो जुडिशियल इंटेंशन सो वॉट आर दोज काइंड ऑफ इशूज इन ड्राफ्टिंग दैट वी एज यू नो सिटीज मे फॉल शॉर्ट ऑफ बट वी नीड टू लुक एट इट फ्रॉम फ्रॉम दी फ्रॉम दी इन साइडर्स व्यू परस्पेक्टिव एज आई कॉल इट सो सर थैंक यू सो मच यू नो and uh, over to you for the uh, for the lecture today thank you uh, professor nachigeta mithal um, first of all let me congratulate uh, professor nachigeta and uh, and salute his uh, determination to take forward the legal education in this country in this uh, covid pandemic time also uh, in fact uh, he died to get to uh, his uh, polished job and take up this challenge that's why i wanted to uh, salute him thank you he, he has taken a bold step let's see how it goes and how it is welcomed by you people and the student community the public it need not be limited to the students only it can be to the aspirants uh, to the judicial service it can go to the public who would like to learn lessons of law could be a lessons of law to the public also from the virtual school there may be many people interested in learning that so we can have a course called lessons in law or in the basis whoever wants to learn so so we can start from the constitution the statutes how is it how a law is made how is it implemented how is it uh, interpreted all this process of making law all these things you know there's some idea which struck me immediately i just thought of sharing with you yeah let me come to the topic uh, of a public interest litigation this public interest litigation is actually a concept borrowed from uh, us actually united states where you know where a single person or an individual cannot actually go to the court on account of inaccessibility uh um, due to poverty illiteracy or marginalization where their interests are to be taken care of that's so this uh, jurisprudence slowly started and as far as india is concerned justice krishnayar just uh, first tested in 1976 but the main case came in the first reported case is in uh, justice bagodis uh, hosainara kathun where in you know, a 40000 of the under the under trials uh, were released she uh, that was filed by kabila hingrani the mother of uh, priya hingrani another senior advocate in the supreme court now yeah that was the first uh, uh, case justice bagodi and justice desai they were the uh, bench uh, really with that case that is the main, main case and because you know, look at the situation where 40000 Uh, what do you call under trial is coming to court and filing forty thousand petitions. So, a new jurisprudence started emerging, uh, of course, borrowing from um, United States on this jurisprudence as to how a, a public's uh, interests can be protected through court. Well, um, what is the role of court actually? Let's take two constitutional courts. Uh, we call it constitutional courts because uh, these are the two courts which are vested with the power to interpret the constitution as simple as it is you may have many other meanings but uh, constitutional courts uh, i would like to simply put it in this way these courts have the power to interpret the constitution article in the high court and uh, high courts and uh, the supreme court of india and the supreme court of india is considered the guardian of the constitution of india and what is the role of the guardian 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 soul is to protect the children no so therefore if the constitution is to be guarded guided the way the constitution should work actually a duty is cast on the supreme court as the guardian of the constitution of india and that is why in the uh, constitution we have article 32 you know where a uh, fundamental rights of uh, a person or persons or people are uh, affected they can go straight to the supreme court but there is nowhere else in this world in the world where you have a such a fundamental right granted under the constitution uh, to approach the apex court straight you can walk in 
in case there is a grievance with regard to violation, not only grievance, but in case there is violation of um, your fundamental right as an individual or as a collective. So that, that, that uh, article is called the soul of the constitution, article 32, the soul of the constitution, because it is such a precious uh, and such a wonderful uh, provision. Um, you know, the, the, the founding fathers thought fit to be conferred on the Supreme Court of India because it is in the, uh, in the hands of the Supreme Court of India, this constitution is to be uh, taken through, even in rough weathers. Whether, the con whether this uh, institution has failed in its uh, guardianship duty is something for the history to say. And uh, part of the history, some of us uh, would have seen also on more than one occasion as to whether they were able to stand up and protect and uh, uh, safeguard the constitution. That's a different issue. So let me come to this. So the, 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 the public interest litigation is actually uh, filed only in the constitutional courts. You don't go and file a public interest civil suit because in the civil court, you go to civil court when your own civil rights are protected or when they seek a resolution of a civil dispute. So therefore, this uh, public interest litigation is uh, filed only in the high courts or the Supreme Court. Why it is so? Because as I told you, these are the courts which are given the power to interpret the constitution of India. And these are the courts which are um, given the power to issue writs or orders um, for uh, uh, for uh, in the interest of the public or uh, in the in the in the uh, matter of protection of fundamental rights. That's the main important uh, thing you have to see. I just uh, speak about uh, the Article 226 first because uh, that's the uh, place where uh, uh, in the states uh, you may not go straight to the High Court, uh, so Supreme Court. But um, all of you are in the state concerned. The High Court has a, a territorial jurisdiction. You all of you know it also. It can uh, issue a writ beyond its jurisdiction also, but it should be confined to the subject concerning the dispute that is brought to it. That is why a Union of India a writ can be issued to the Union of India because Union of India is all over. There is no territorial limit. But you cannot issue a writ uh, by your Gujarat High Court to the Delhi government because it doesn't come under the territorial jurisdiction. That is how it has to be understood. Whereas it can issue a writ to the Union of India because Union of India is the state of Gujarat is part of the Union of India. And the Union of India also has its role and function and um, um, what you call uh, uh, presence uh, in the state of Gujarat also, or any other state also. Therefore, the territorial jurisdiction binds, you know, in respect of subjects or uh, issues which are otherwise uh, to be in the particular jurisdiction of a uh, of another high court. So in the High Court, in Article 226, if you read Article 226, the main purpose of uh, Article 226, um, the power of High Court to uh, issue writs, uh, notwithstanding anything contained in Article 32. Article 32, I'll get, get back to you a little later. That is on the, uh, uh, in the Supreme Court's power. Every High Court shall have power throughout the territories in relation to which it exercises jurisdiction. It exercises jurisdiction because um, some of the union territories are also uh, brought within the jurisdiction. In some of the high courts are given power uh, more than one high court like uh, Punjab and Haryana. But the, the high court has uh, jurisdiction in both states and the union territory of Chandigarh also. In Andhra, re still recently, Telangana was separated. It was uh, uh, on the state of Andhra Pradesh, which was for uh, both high courts. So likewise, how many high courts we have? Sir? How many states we have? 29. Uh, one is gone, 28. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, one minus 28. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we have 24 high courts. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, therefore, the jurisdiction is actually that is confirmed by the constitution. You can go to other states as well because you don't have separate high court for a, one classic example. What I stated is um, Punjab and Haryana. And as far as uh, I could have Bombay is concerned, it's Maharashtra and Goa. Um, likewise, you know, you can, and Kerala is considered Kerala and Lakshadweep. 
So it can go to Calcutta is concerned, Calcutta is and, and the Port Blair Andamans also. So likewise in the jurisdiction. Um, within the writ or orders, uh, nature of habeas corpus, mandamus, prohibition, covarant or certiorari, or any of them for the enforcement of any of the rights conferred under part three. Part three, you know, it's actually the fundamental rights or for any other purpose. So therefore, this article, which is actually uh, meant and provided to safeguard the fundamental rights of the people within the state whose or within the territory over which the high court in a particular state exercises jurisdiction is meant to protect the fundamental rights and to uh, what you call uh, to, to take the cause of justice forward if you if i can put it uh, in so generic terms to take the cause of justice forward that's why for any other purpose any purpose any other purpose of uh, justice and um, in uh, many of the decisions you know it has been held it can it need not necessarily be to be the person who approaches normally you are uh, you approach a high court only when you have a grievance and uh, you want the resolution of uh, your dispute but public interest is a situation where it's not your private interest but the interest of the public so this public interest has to be understood uh, in uh, contrast with the private interest i'll tell you three other aspects also with the p but uh, public interest generally or originally and basically means it is not the private interest litigation, it's a public interest. That means in the interest of the public, not your personal interest. There's nothing personal for you. You are not interested uh, in publicity, you are not interested in paisa, you are not interested in any vendetta, you are not interested in any uh, private motives or no, there's nothing like that. So it's a public interest. Uh, uh, that you are trying to safeguard uh, while filing a public interest litigation. Uh, and it is not adversarial. Any litigation is uh, generally, you know, is adversarial. You know what is adversarial, you know? One is inquisitorial, the other is adversarial. Inquisitorial is actually the administrative, mainly, mainly the executive power of the instance. They look into the file, take a decision. They don't hear the both parties, etc. There's no question of hearing. They just inquire into the police uh, investigation. It's, it's inquisitorial. They, they inquire into and uh, reach their own conversation. It's inquisitorial. But uh, that's why, you know, in certain countries, there is no question of this. Well, both sides arguing or natural justice, etc. You file a case, they will look into the, matter, the, the, the documents and take a decision. That's inquisitorial. They conduct their own inquiry and uh, reach a conversion. Whereas uh, adversarial is, you, the courts uh, hear both sides, look into all matters, objectively, transparently, and, uh, you know, with, with the participation of both sides. There's nothing hidden in the, in the process of an adversarial jurisdiction. Whereas uh, a lot of things hidden in the case of inquisitorial jurisdiction. In adversarial, there's nothing hidden. That's why, you know, uh, we had a lot of uh, hue and cry when this, uh, what is the seal cover jurisprudence was first uh, tested in the Supreme Court also. Well, what is the seal cover jurisprudence? Because a court is an uh, institution which is transparent by its very, very, very nature. So it cannot look into, it cannot rely on uh, what they call uh, a seal or uh, an information which is not otherwise shared with the other side. One side is state, the other side is the party. So any information which is not shared with the other side cannot be relied upon. Court can look into, that's one thing, but rely on is a different thing. So if the court is relying on, then it must be an information which is shared with or brought to the notice so the other party is not prejudiced or other party gets an opportunity of rebuttal. We call it rebuttal. That's why, you know, we file it, uh, 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 we call a petition then, the counter of it, we file a plaint, then the written statement. Uh, like that, you know, so the, uh, an opportunity to respond to it. So, in the High Court, public interest is not adversarial in nature. It's actually because it is actually the duty of the guardian. It's the duty of the court. And uh, it's against the state also. So being a welfare state, because we, the people of India, you know, it's a welfare state. 
So the welfare of the people is actually the collective duty of the guardian and the lawmaker, the state. So the state is not actually conducting a public interest litigation in the court, no. Court is only assisting the court in the matter of protection of the rights of those who are marginalized or uh, uh, what you call um, uh, illiterate or uh, bonded labor or migrant, whatever nature, you know, it's a class where, you know, people generally doesn't come in the individual capacity, but it's a, a, a collective group or not otherwise in a, not in a position to approach court for the interest of their grievance. So, so that is actually, so there, it's not an adversary. So government is actually not filing a counterfeit generally. It can, it's actually a misnomer. Government is only filing an affidavit in, in the true sense of a public business because it is not contesting, it's actually assisting the court to, to, to safeguard the interests, uh, which is a duty cast on the guardian. And when is that duty cast on the guardian? When the original parent fails to discharge it. Who is the original parent? The state. Because the welfare state, the citizen is of the state, not of the court, is the state. So it is the duty of the state to protect the rights of its citizens. And what is the duty of the court? When there is a failure, the court will step in and uh, direct the parent or direct the person or the authority to discharge its obligation cast under a law or under a constitution to safeguard the interests of the state, interest of the, the, the environment, interest of the nature, interest of the people, interest of the society, interest of uh, the, 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 the group at large. So that is the, the very, very nature of, uh, so it has to be understood now that we put it to, there are five, the, the, the four or five P's in this, you know. So it's not a private interest litigation. You should not have a, a motive uh, to come into this. Uh, that is why when the, the, the courts uh, impose high costs, even in COVID, uh, you might have listened uh, to a query from the court that, you know, so you have a lot of time, you're wasting the time. Since you have a lot of time, you're wasting the court of the time of the court also for banning Coca-Cola, uh, things like that, you know, see, it doesn't, it's not an issue actually, which is concerned. You have a motive behind it. So it, it's, it's, it's a private industry. Yes. Uh, it's a, or something, somebody might uh, give you some money, you know, to give a, a negative propaganda or something else, you know, so, like with Coca-Cola, you know, so it comes in a paisa interest litigation. Somebody gets money and you know, files a petition in the nature of law. Uh, in many high courts, we find this sort of people. Uh, in one case, the Supreme Court imposed a cost of uh, 60, uh, 25 lakhs. Uh, in another case, it's two courts. But uh, in a case where the Supreme Court imposed uh, Justice Kyle's bench, in uh, imposed 25 lakhs, it's a case where the, he had filed 64 public interest litigations. So he has a he is a professional public interest litigant, not a person exposing the cause of the public, but he is a professional public interest. If there is a professional public interest litigation, he will be used, or that person will be used for um, you know no, for 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 private interests. So it's not as opposed to private interest, as opposed to. Um, paisa interest as opposed to public, uh, sorry, publicity interest. Yes, there are certain people who are crazy about publicity, you know, doing so many things, uh, publicity interest, uh, and um, no personal interest as opposed to personal interest. So it's not the personal interest, not personal, not private, not paisa, not publicity, uh, like all these things. So who has to? Who has to come? Because uh, Professor Nachiket was uh, just reminding us, you know, who, who should be the person coming? Who should be the person? Not any welfare. Tomorrow I read in the newspaper, oh, today, uh, pandemic, no medicine, all that. I go to the court and file a publication. Issue a direction to the state to find out the medicine and apply, apply tests, you know. You are, that is not your, that is not your, uh, your, your, your uh, uh, cup of tea at all. You should be a public spirited person. This is the word you must keep in mind. You should be a public spirited person, an activist who is otherwise involved in the building of community or building up of the nation or building of the society. 
it can be an organization also there are so so many organizations who are taking up the cause like um, common cause um, supreme court of advocates and the court association there are so many uh, such uh, advocate clerks association there are so many uh, organizations also coming up and taking up the cause of uh, those uh, people who cannot be otherwise represented individually in court so you must the 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 the, the uh, if you are coming as an individual you must be having a track record of uh, involving in society for the upliftment of the poor or in the areas which uh, you are exposing the cause before the court so court will ask you what what have you done in this matters what is what are your credentials what is your uh, history a person totally unconnected and coming on the filing uh, we have several such a professional uh, public interest litigants in supreme court also in any case of public interest uh, one or two persons will next day will file a public interest litigation in one case i remember a lawyer was arguing himself saying that mine was the first case so my name should come first when the matter is reported though we felt, felt embarrassed but uh, looking at the history he was right therefore uh, that case is known after his name also so uh, look at the, the, the interest i'm saying i'm not attributing in motive but there is a there is a hidden interest in that you know so whenever if you if you have a hidden interest that means you are not public spirited you are private spirited that's the difference your public spirit should be uh, uh, should be demonstrably known to the society and demonstrably visible in the area where you want to bring the attention of the court your visibility should be there in the area where you work in the environment in media in uh, ngos um, what not in whatever field uh, you are um, um, coming to uh, uh, drawing the attention of the court you must have a track record of uh, uh, having worked in the field and a person knowledgeable and a person committed to the the, the public cause that's very important otherwise you know uh, as i said you know it will be publicity oriented or uh, publicity interested or paisa interested or private interested or personal interested is in many service that's why you know in um, service matters we never entertain a public interest litigation all those who come uh, uh, and file a public interest litigation in service matters um, the supreme court has held there's nothing called the public interest if there is some some problem we file a, what is that it called a covarando if the person or occupying an office is always not uh, qualified uh, to hold that office you can file a covarando that's a different issue but in a, you can't file a public in this because there's no public in this in service matters in promotion or in increment or in service etc unless you know an organization comes for um, suppose you know uh, um, uh, an organization particular um, uh, a trade union or a service organization files a petition for um, uh, challenging the uh, curtailment of age of retirement as one can understand it's a collective action there there is a public interest because it is filed by an organization not by an individual whereas you know you can't challenge the promotion of somebody else in public interest who are you unless you are an aspirant or unless you are affected if you are an aspirant or affected then it is not public interest you are private interest so he file in your individual capacity not as a private public cause so in the pretext of um, exposing a cause you cannot have a hidden agenda uh, keep to 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 uh, otherwise harass a person so the the lame object uh, sorry the the what do you call the the the, uh, the uh, hidden agenda behind the lame prosecution courts have been always quite wary and uh, we have been imposing heavy costs also in matters where uh, uh, in himadal i remember um, in a case where the court imposed uh, uh, that was i think it was a power project uh, a public interest was filed simply to stall and to wreak money he was negotiating for getting money something like that so that was uh, um, uh, later found out that the cost imposed i think a cost of 1 crore or so is heavy cost it should be done with uh, iron hand according to me also so that is uh, as far as high courts are concerned and coming to supreme court supreme court uh, you know uh, it has been a situation where uh, um, uh, the, the it, it is a situation where you have to approach the Supreme Court under Article 32 of the Constitution. 
Article 32 of the Constitution of India, as I told you, it's the soul of the Constitution where, you know, anybody can directly approach the Supreme Court if there is a, a, a violation, if there is violation of your fundamental right. Remedies for enforcement of rights confirmed by this part. This part means part three. 226 did not come under part three. That's why it in 226 it was at part three. 32 comes under part three. That's why it's called this part. The right to move the Supreme Court by appropriate proceedings for the enforcement of rights conferred by this part is guaranteed. This is the word. The Supreme Court shall have power to issue directions or orders or writs including writs in the nature of habeas corpus, mandamus, prohibition, co-warrant, and certiorari, which, uh, whichever may be appropriate for the enforcement of any of the rights confirmed uh, by this part. And uh, as I told you, Usainara Khatun was the first case uh, filed by Kapila Hingarani. Uh, that's the first reported case in 1979, Justice Bhagavadi and Justice Desai. And thereafter, Justice Bhagavadi was known as a very great champion of this public in this leaders. Even a, even a postcard sent to the court was entertained. Many of the high courts thereafter, the Supreme Court also letters were sent, and some of the letters were taken as. Um, so it's actually uh, some of the, just, just four or five parameters. It's actually meant for the purpose of redressing a public injury, enforcing a public duty. Protecting social, collective, diffused rights and interests, vindicating public interests, and the person should be acting bona fide and who has sufficient interest. These are, the, in fact, this is uh, taken from the SP Gupta, another uh, celebrated decision um, of the Supreme Court. Uh, um, reported in 1981, S.P. Gutta versus uh, Union of India. Well, the, 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 the Constitution bench uh, said these are actually the parameters. Uh, uh, it should be uh, it should be for redressing public injury, enforcing public duty, protecting social, collective, diffused rights and interests, or vindicating public interests. Any citizen who should be he should be acting bona fide and who has uh, sufficient interest, then he is competent to approach the court uh, for protection uh, of the fundamental rights of the class of the people who are otherwise not in a position to, and who need not also come individually to the court also. So that in a way helps the court to address a class, a group, or, 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 a, or, or a society at large also. And the famous uh, MC Mehta case in the protection of forests and environment. But for uh, MC Mehta, the situation across the country would have been different in the matter of the protection of forests and wildlife and natural environment, all three aspects, forests, wildlife, and natural environment. Only because of the Supreme Court had uh, taken up this course, and he's still bending also. He's a, he's a warrior. MC Mehta is still coming to court in this uh, so public interest litigation, some of the matters also. And there are the committees, expert committees appointed uh, that look into those issues also across the across the country. And all the states and union territories are also parties. And the protection of women at the workplace, that is Vishaga. There are ever so many, even the judges appointment case, they were SP Gupta referred to, then came the uh, second judges case, then came the third judge's case, and then JC is the fourth judge's case also. Uh, that is why well Supreme Court SCORA, Supreme Court Advocate Record Association. They filed this uh, second case and came the third uh, by way of reference, and the fourth NJC um, public interest, and some of the people otherwise challenged also in their individual capacity also. Well, uh, there are ever so many. I just want to read uh, uh, one small paragraph and I'll stop. We'll have a little discussion also. Um, uh, in uh, constitutional matter, in Kalpana Mehta versus Union of India, whether uh, in PIL um, a parliamentary standing committee report can be taken into consideration. That was the question referred to the constitutional bench. Uh, and speaking for the majority, um, and actually, this is an agreed point also. Uh, Justice Deepak Mr. the then Chief Justice of India, yeah, this is at, uh, reported in 2018 7 SCC. Page one. 
2018, 76-page one constitution bench. Paragraph 45, because this is uh, contextually relevant, that's why I'm just reading it out to you. The judiciary cannot abdicate the solemn duty which the constitution has placed on its shoulders. That is, to protect the fundamental rights of the citizens guaranteed under part three of the constitution. The constitutional courts, constitutional courts mean Supreme Court and High Court. Courts cannot sit in oblivion when fundamental rights of individuals are at stake. Our constitution has conceived the constitutional courts to act as defenders against illegal intrusion of the fundamental rights of the individuals. The constitution under its ages has armed the constitutional courts with wide powers which the courts should exercise without an iota of hesitation or apprehension when the fundamental rights of individuals are in jeopardy. Uh, there are several paragraphs uh, with regard to public interest litigation in that uh, decision also written by um, Justice Chandrajood uh, uh, in speaking for himself and Justice Sikri and Justice Ashok Bhushan in his own uh, um, uh, capacity. So there are three judgments, but I just read out to you from paragraph 40 by this uh, three uh, majority uh, ordered by the Chief Justice, Justice uh, Deepak Misa. So as far as uh, this uh, public interest litigation as such is concerned, this is something which uh, a public spirited person or a public spirited uh, movement or a public spirited organization or an organization which is intended to safeguard the interest of the society at large brings to the notice of the uh, constitutional courts, namely high courts and Supreme Court for um, protection and safeguard, protection, um, uh, protecting and safeguarding the interests of uh, generally the poor, the marginalized, the oppressed, uh, the illiterate, the tribals, the weaker sections of the society, um, and for protection of the environment, protection of the, um, um, what do you call, forest, wildlife, environment generally, yeah, environment. And uh, sometimes as a class legislation where, uh, you know, if it is to be uh, for, a, for a class, this public interest uh, also is sometimes uh, brought uh, by a particular group of people also. And uh, in the matter of, uh, um, um, medicines, yes, um, the pricing of medicine, uh, uh, several, because, but for that uh, uh, decision, probably the, the medicine in India, for particular for cancer, would have been very costly. Um, now, 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 what is, yes, that was the decision of Justice Safta Pala. Yeah. yeah, there are several, several cases, you know, where uh, the courts have uh, intervened, but for the court, because the government is always of the political parties, no? The political parties will have their own ideas, agendas, policies. So the political governments will always be interested in things. Whereas constitutional courts will look into the constitution and what the constitution has provided for safeguarding the interests of the poor people. In policy matters, the politicians may not have this idea at all. Politicians may not be worried at all because they will be only thinking of development, be it at the cost of uh, anybody else. And that famous decision, uh, Narmada, uh, Vachitao, Andolan, Bandua, Mukti Morcha, there are several such, you know, where in the matter of development, the, the political uh, governments always think of uh, you know, advancing development, but at the time, same time suppressing the rights of uh, the oiseless uh, and marginalized people. So those people are uh, interested in those situations, this public spirited individuals and the public spirited movements uh, come in course. As you know, we make law by the legislation. The, the government that administer law actually implement the execution. We call legislature, executive, judiciary, which uh, uh, interpret law. Fourth pillar is the media, and fifth pillar is the civil society movement. According to me, there are five pillars in the good governance of the country. 
in the good governance country the fifth pillar in the times that we pass through is very important that is civil society movements um, see these civil society movements if you are a, um, uh, if if you have a public spirited person and if you want to have, have um, if you want to harness uh, the cooperation and collaboration of similarly is public spirited persons also we get them we gather them and uh, have a civil society movement which will help you rather than the individual there are i've seen certain people fighting only individually they cannot they cannot cooperate or collaborate with anybody this is their constitution according to me constitutionally they will not be able to uh, you know to work along with others also that is a constitutional problem but according to me civil society movements are important because if you are a movement if you are an organization you will have a collective force you have a you will have a stronger uh, um, you not also get a lot of inputs also you don't have to go around uh, uh, for the inputs also you you have the collective wisdom when you move the high court or the supreme court because the court will be asking you for your assistance in the area where you are actually uh, asking for the protection of the interests of the people so, so these are some of the areas um, where i wanted you to know and um, uh recently uh, the supreme court has been asking the high courts to uh, just a second to frame certain guidelines generally with regard to the uh, handling of public interest litigation and therefore in the high courts only the chief justice court uh, takes up public interest litigation that is something a jurisdiction which has to be kept along with the chief justice only the supreme court has always reminded the chief justice because um, uh, it, it, it shows the seriousness with which uh, this is to be tackled because the chief justice is the person who otherwise uh, uh, has uh, other opportunity to interact with the state also he is the head of the judiciary in the state uh, that is the reason it should be kept with the chief justice and in supreme court um, Uh, Supreme Court of India actually now all are equal, and the Chief Justice is the first among the equals. Therefore, Supreme Court of India is concerned. There is no uh, particular jurisdiction like that. Therefore, though generally it was with the Chief Justice of India, now it is actually distributed to other benches also, because uh, uh, the, the 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 huge burden that uh, uh, is uh, you now within with. Uh, uh, every public in the litigation, the Chief Justice Court alone cannot handle it because. Uh, it has to handle other matters also. So, and um, the Supreme Court, in fact, uh, has issued uh, some guidelines with regard to um, the the uh, uh, filing of uh, public interest uh, litigations. It was uh, it, the, the full court directed uh, in his uh, decision dated one twelve eighty eight. You can um, get it in the um, uh, Google also. Supreme Court of India compilation of guidelines to be followed for entertaining letters, stroke petitions uh, received. So the letters, letter petitions falling under the following categories alone will be ordinarily entertained: bonded labour, neglected children, non-payment of minimum wages, jail petitions, etc. Um, police custody, harassment. Uh, Uh, there are several. You can just uh, browse through all those matters also. And the Supreme Court has also indicated in that circular that you know there are certain things which are not public interest, like uh, uh, premature release of a person, um, uh, grievance against the jail superintendent, some conciliation matter. Those all wherever. a public interest is not involved and uh, perceivably a private interest is there you know those things are to be treated separately cannot be treated as uh, public interest litigation it's called the compilation of um, guidelines to be followed for entertain letters or petitions received in the matter of public interest that is in the supreme court opinion so uh, my dear friends uh, this is uh, generally the public interest uh, litigation and as lawyers i tell you uh, as lawyers you should be people who should be uh, arguing this matters or you should be taking up those matters uh, in your personal capacity as well since you are uh, otherwise involved in the nation building 
or otherwise uh, involved in the civil society movements if you are such a public spirited person uh, you should be in a position to take up because um, you are a law man because you know law so society expects a lot from you maybe from your in your uh, in your own village you may be the only lawyer available in you may be the only lawyer in the cluster of villages where they may not have electricity they may not have drinking water they may not have beverage they may not have uh, Uh, a healthy environment for children uh, they not have a school education facilities so all these are issues in which should actually disturb your sleep i wanted to conclude my uh, uh, talk on this only when you become a law man several things in you know, which you notice around which you see are constitutionally wrong and which uh, according to you is called injustice you know that should disturb your sleep and you should be the person who should be standing up and taking up the cause in an appropriate way before the appropriate forum so this is my uh, request to all of you look around raise your head look around and see what injustice people have suffered or are suffering but are not in a position to raise their voice they have tank but no voice they can with the tank they can only raise noise but with you are given a law man's tank to raise voice so then the 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 voice of the noise is the lawyer a public spirited lawyer take up such causes also in your because india is still you know a lot of a, a massive requirement for a, public spirited uh, individuals or organizations uh, taking up the cause of those uh, people who are not uh, otherwise in a position to speak when the constitution was drafted he said it was is a constitutional butcher baker candlestick maker these are the three categories which is said now butcher has become rich baker has become rich candlestick maker maker has become rich now uh, there are several new other categories who have come migrant migrant workers asha workers the tribes scheduled castes and it goes like that there are such people you know so since you are a gifted person what is your gift your gift is your the law and what is the law law meant to strike at injustice wherever it is found so you should take up the cause of justice that's why god has gifted you with the law to be a law man so all the best my dear children uh, my dear students i'm sorry just <laughs> the children my dear students uh, and my dear aspirants for judicial service my dear young lawyers this is uh, the aspiration you should have in your mind just take up the cause. right <laughs> thank you thank you so much sir so i <clears throat> i request now everyone that uh, please switch on your mics one by one or just raise your hands i can switch it on for you so that there will be least disruption and there will be no noise uh, in the discussion in between so what i can do sir uh, we can take some questions right sir yeah yeah you can do. okay so one of the questions which is already there in the chat box is from uh, manav shroff manav do you want to introduce yourself and then ask or should i ask on your behalf if you want to use the mic so you can also do that or some of you can raise hands and i can then allow you to uh, to speak because that will be a better order so okay manav can you hear me uh, yeah go ahead yes sir good evening uh good evening sir good evening uh, mr joseph Uh, my uh, my question to you uh, is: Can a freshman, a young lawyer, file a PIL in the High Court, or would it count as an inexperience or lack of knowledge on the part of the uh, on the part of the freshman? Can he, as a public interest, file a PIL there, or would he be charged with cost or uh, with inexperience? yeah shrub uh, it all depends on 
as I told you, not your age, not your standing, but your standing in the public spirit, public cause. You may have become a lawyer now, you are a young lawyer, but you must have been working in the society for their upliftment, moving with uh, uh, the, the village uh, groups, moving with uh, civil society movements, uh, taking up the cause of others, uh, uh, speaking for others, uh, you know, uh, and such, you know, stand, uh, stand, standing, sitting in Dharna before a, uh, an office when the collective rights of the poor people have been. So that way, I'm simply citing the smallest of examples. So it's not your age as a lawyer that is important, but you are standing uh, for the cause of the uh, particular issue that you are taking up. That is very important. Merely because you're a lawyer, you can't take up, likewise, you know, uh, there was uh, something called a bank Coca-Cola. Then uh, <laughs> deport, one case, deport all Muslims to uh, Pakistan. Justice Nariman was uh, fretting and fuming, saying this, uh, but somehow the man withdrew the litigation, withdrew the PL and went like that. So, so don't go with the crazy ideas. When you go to the court in a public interest litigation, train yours, ask the first question, am I a public spirited person to take up this cost number one? Am I sufficiently informed in the cost which I'm taking up, number two? Number three, have I got any other interest like uh, PISA, publicity, personal or private or uh, such interest like that? So eschew all those things. And then you take up this course and then nobody can uh, find fault with you. Right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So Atul, I've read your question in the chat box, but your question isn't very clear. So you will have to make it clear as you want to say that isn't this process becoming a little difficult these days? What do you want? But uh, to say by that, that's not very clear. So I'll pass on to somebody else. Yeah, so somebody else who wants to ask a question, please go ahead. Now, what she actually meant is, you know, uh, <laughs> the court is, court is actually turning a deaf ear these days to the real public cost. That's yeah. actually meant. So pro probably, yeah. So, yeah, next question, please. Good evening, sir. Good evening, yeah. Oh, sir, am I audible? Yeah, yeah, please. Uh, I have a question. So, like, uh, the basic uh, rationale for introducing PIL was to increase access to justice in the country. So, uh, uh, shouldn't the addressing of PILs also, uh, like, there should be a reform in that because PIL is a, uh, is, should be are filed by public interest uh, spirited people. So, uh, addressing PILs or taking up PILs, uh, like there should be a separate recourse where they can be taken up earlier than other cases. Because uh, by filing of PIL, we are increasing access to justice. But till the time that PIL does not reach, uh, reach the courts, is not discussed. Yeah, um, Preeti, yeah. Preet Kiran, yeah. Um, there, there are such uh, um, priorities allotted by the courts uh, generally. That's why you know, a, a one day is allotted for such... Um, in, um, when I was Chief Justice in Himadil, I had allotted the Friday for uh, environment related uh, issues Thursday for um, the what they call the, the children suffer the what they call um, physically or mentally challenged the children um, women related issues etc so uh, it all depends on how public spirited the judge also is right priority should be allotted to genuine public causes yes uh, well, I request everyone to just quickly introduce yourself and then ask the question. Yeah, Albany, you want to go ahead? You raised hand. Yes, sir. Yes, Albany, I can hear you. Yeah. Okay, sir. So it's my privilege to uh, interact with you. My name is Albany Andrew, and I'm from Ernakulam. Uh, sir, my humble question is: So, how far courts have deviated these days from its proactive role, which it played during 1990s? when it comes to crucial and sensitive issues? <laughs> the answer is in your question itself. So, uh, yeah, thankfully now, uh, maybe if you are referring to the migrant issue, thankfully the court has taken a very serious note now and is, is uh, up in arm in that issue. But uh, some of the issues, yes, uh, many courts uh, sometimes uh, were not in a position to actually feel the brunt of it and the timely action. There's no point in taking 
uh, belated action some of the uh, matters which you have in mind now. But thankfully it is uh, so. There is a perception that you know the many courts in the country have not listened to the occasion. There is a perception. There was a perception. At least that is now being corrected. Right. Thank you. Uh, Katyani, you have a question, right? Do you want to ask or should I read it out for you? Katyani? Yeah, Katyani has passed, yeah. passed it on. Either Article 226 or Article 32 is wider in scope in relation to PIL. Yeah, to me, in respect of matters uh, within the state, uh, 226 wider in scope because the implementation or compliance will be better, faster, and expeditious uh, in 226. Not only because for any other causes uh, there in Article 226, but even otherwise because of the territorial advantages that you have, compliance uh, and supervision will be better. Whereas in 32, it's a countrywide. Uh, uh, what they call supervision or countrywide compliance. So it will be less effective in such matters which we have a territorial significance. So this, this should be understood differently. In issues relating to a particular state, it's more effective if the PIL is in the state. But if it is issues uh, concerning the entire country, uh, certainly it should be uh, in the Supreme Court. Rachi, you can go ahead. <clears throat> uh, good evening, sir. I am Prachi, and I'm currently in my second year from, and I'm studying from Punjab University, Chandigarh. And uh, my question is that uh, we can see in certain PIL cases that uh, the courts interfere uh, where the government should. Like, for example, they take up PILs and uh, and they do not follow the system of checks and balances, whereas in the other cases, uh, they let the government handle uh, the case. So what is the criteria? How do the uh, judges decide which, uh, where they uh, want to take up the case and when they don't? Like when they let the government decide and take the measures? Yeah, I see there are uh, certain mechanisms in the courts. Every high court has a committee which uh, look into all the letters they receive and they process it and then they bring it to the notice of the Chief Justice and the Chief Justice finally takes a call as to whether this should be registered as a public investigation. Himadal hired such a letter written by a student uh, uh, complaining of uh, uh, parks, uh, facility, etc. So it all depends on the local situation. And there are uh, committees available in every high court for screening those uh, letters received uh, uh, let us address the Chief Justice and uh, if it is a regular PIL file, then of course it is uh, scrutinized judicially before the court. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Prachi. Yeah. yeah, next question, please. Yeah, who is uh, going next? <clears throat> Yeah, Katyani, you have raised hand. You can go ahead if. Uh, good evening. Yes, Katyani. Yeah, my question is whether the article has a wider interpretation in context to uh, PILs. Like if we go to High Court first and then we try to appeal, uh, uh, it gets rejected. And then we try to file it in uh, Supreme Court. Is it valid? No, in respect of an issue which you unsuccessfully tested before a high court, you cannot take the same issue by yourself before the Supreme Court. Maybe through some other persons or some other rules, the Supreme Court may entertain, but uh, which you agitated and lost, you cannot take up in the Supreme Court. Otherwise, then through an appeal, of course. Otherwise. But, SLP, okay. SLP. Can it sorry, be SLP. done otherwise? Okay. No, otherwise, no, be you can't. Otherwise, no, no, because uh, the High Court and Supreme Court are in the uh, constitutionally stand the same footing. The Supreme yeah. Court is not a higher court of uh, the High Court in respect of matters dealt with in the High Court. Otherwise, then through a constitutionally permitted route of one appeal, the other is special leave. 
that is in the judicial scrutiny but as far as territorial jurisdiction is concerned the high court is supreme in its jurisdiction thank you so much sir right yeah uh, you can go ahead i can see the hand up there somebody in the name of a student please go ahead yes next question <clears throat> i could just see somebody raising hand there please feel free to go ahead or you can type in the chat box i'll be happy to take it up for you hi so it's me lakshika i want to ask a question um uh, good evening sir uh, my question is uh, that pil is being uh, having their own uh, share of advantages especially um, the part where court fees are pardoned a lot of people have been mischievous in using uh, the way of pils in disturbing the court's time and a lot of uh, for the lack of a better word if i may say frivolous pils have been filed for example for uh, opposing or for petitioning the name of uh, the changing of name of cities or banning a certain kind of jokes which could uh, uh, which have uh, said to be uh, sensitive against a particular community i wouldn't want to name anybody or any particular pil but uh, these kind of things have been happening while i understand that there is a procedure when um, कॉमनलीनो restrain itself from pending of course uh, a lot of pressing notice but there are certain such pils where notices have been issued yeah so, yeah i uh, yeah i i got the how point can, how can this mischief be avoided yeah i get I, i get your point yeah see as far as uh, court is concerned it is not the first uh, place where you should go so there may be places which are issues like uh, it's a political issue like you said you know changing the name of a city it's a political uh, policy issue to be taken by the political government the person whom you voted because in my court i always say that this is to be told at the place where you voted whom you voted for so there are people that's why in the checks and balances don't we don't have a strict separation of uh, territorial separation of powers but there are certain issues which should be dealt in the parliament or in the state legislature You, your court cannot govern the state or the country. No, it's not your jurisdiction. You are not the administrator of the state or the country. You are only actually interpreting uh, the, the constitution, and you are only having a power of judicial review of administrative action or inaction. So, when the state uh, acts wrongly or unconstitutionally, or when the state fails to act constitutionally, then you can step in. So, how do you know that? therefore that's why it's in a public spirited person public spirited person should first take up the issue with the government issue with the uh, uh, law makers so the because there's a fundamental principle is that no court can issue a writ to a state legislature or a uh, parliament or the parliament to make a law because to make or not to make is the wisdom of or prerogative of the legislature and no court can compel that's the first principle on um, the theory of separation of powers as far as jurisdiction is concerned therefore um, uh, your public spirit should be tested as to the, the type of matters you take up and what pains have you take up on ta- uh, uh, have you take up on yourself for agitating this cause that should be the test then that, that's actually the test the courts will always see what have you what pains have you taken upon yourself for agitating this public cause so there are certain matters which you should take to the the, the court of the people court of the people is actually legislature either state legislature or the parliament because it is where you make law you make a policy court is neither to make law nor to evolve a policy right thank you like a lot sir thank you your answer very much so there is one question coming up from a student shubham his mic is not working so i'll ask on his behalf so he wants to know sir is there any mechanism available through which 
we can raise local public interest issues of villages and districts at lower level courts rather than approaching such a higher level high court or a supreme court no this uh, public interest litigation is available only in the constitutional court because it's actually these are the courts which are meant uh, to to see the the constitutional vision of justice as i told you, you know other courts are civil courts but of course you have forums like a uh, human rights commission there is a human rights court in every district there has to be human rights court in every district there you can take up this issue violation of uh, human rights there uh, your uh, local standing is uh, very widely interpreted again because it is a human rights commission commission is inquisitorial and adversarial both they are exercising so they you only need only bring to the notice of the commission the violation so wherever there are such uh, commissions you can do that but otherwise public interest litigation as such will lie only before the high court of the state or the supreme court of the country right yeah shelja ji you can ask your question you can go ahead you can unmute yourself uh, one second let me complete that question yeah. even the issue of the uh, village or panchayat or cluster of villages that can be taken up as a, a, a public uh, interest litigation before high court suppose there is no electricity uh, you know, all around your villages there is electricity but your village alone one will not your village one village alone is uh, deprived of that facility because the people in that village do not belong to the political party which is in power so that is a great injustice so that matter you can certainly take like drinking water like sewerage like uh, uh, healthy uh, what you call sanitation water it is you know such public process even if it is uh, of a village or a ward in the panchayat even then also you can bring it to the notice of the high court right yeah shelja ji you can go ahead <laughs> hello sir am i audible yes so good evening sir uh, good my evening. name is shelja i represent customer awaz magazine uh, my question is i am actually uh, can plb pil be raised on established government rules such as uh, reservation in education system and government jobs etc uh, um, professor najib can you repeat that question it was not fully audible yeah i know ma'am ma'am aapka awaaz thoda sa cut ke aa raha hai it's not very much uh... Uh, easy to be comprehended. I know. Thoda sa disturbance hai from your side. I could get you, some education like, system. Yeah, you can. Uh, can you sir, type sir, it? Huh? Yeah, I'm. I'm. Uh, uh, you are audible now. You are speak to the mic. Yeah, tell me. Sir, I was yeah. asking you, can PIL PIL be raised on established government rules uh, and acts, uh, such as uh, reservation in uh, education system and the government jobs, etc. I see there are two aspects. One is called the collective, uh, what they call collective, collective uh, is called um, um, collective litigation. Yes, litigation okay. on behalf of a collective or a group, okay. and uh, litigation on behalf, uh, for and on behalf of a, a group which cannot otherwise raise their voice. So you may have a pensionized group, you may have a employees. It's a class action. Yeah. is called class action as just trying to get this word class action is different from public interest litigation class action is an action in respect of a particular class like uh, uh, um, gazetted employees <coughs> like uh, sub inspectors like uh, government doctors like okay. professors uh, mm -hmm. like uh, judges this is called class action but whereas public interest litigation though it has a nuance of a class action but yet actually it is origin purpose and uh, the our objective is to have the voice of those uh, voiceless people who know only to raise noise not voice to the notice of the court right that's the difference right okay. anybody else you know the difference you know the difference between voice and noise the noise means ill informed or uninformed uh, um, what do you call um, agitation voice means you know the informed uh uh informed informed uh, sound yes informed uh, uh, informed call yes so i understood that uh, pil uh, can be filed by only individuals uh, and uh, 
NGOs, is this true, sir? Yeah, yeah, it's possible. It, it, either, as I said, public spirited individual or public spirited yes. civil society movements. It can be NGOs also. Yeah, it could be NGOs, yeah. Sir, why is there, is there a block on companies or commercial organizations applying for PIA? The very word is commercial, no? <laughs> Corporate and commercial. They have a different uh, color or they have different, uh, what do you call, potential or different uh, uh, opportunity for access at, uh, altogether. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so there's one question. Although I know the answer cannot be given because the matter of subject is, so she wants to know that how uh, strong do you think is the PI against PMKS fund that's going to be addressed on Monday, what could be possible outcomes? You know, so that subject is, I don't know how, how to react. It depends on how strongly you have drafted it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Sheen, I hope you get the answer there. Right. Okay, so there is one more question from Priyanka and similar question was from Mr. Atul, which I'm combining together that cases which involve political questions, how uh, much does the court have the power to decide such kind of PIA, which may have a political issue related? Yeah, yeah, the decision which I referred to, you know, uh, in that uh, case um, of uh, this Kalpana Mehta. In right. Kalpana Mehta also, uh, Supreme Court, in fact, said even to the political parties, uh, this can be, as if you just refer to paragraph 48 uh, of that Kalpana Mehta versus Union of India. 2018 7 SCC page 1. Yeah. 2018 7 SCC page 1, para 48. Uh, it is necessary, um, actually, SR Bombay. SR Bombay has been quoted. And endorsing SR Bombay, SR Bombay is actually a decision 1994, volume 3 SCC page 1. 1994, volume 3 SCC page 1 is a 9 minute decision. Um, SR Bombay, quoting SR Bombay, it has been said that. For maintaining democratic process and to avoid political friction, it is necessary to direct the political parties within the purview of the constitutional umbrella to strongly adhere to constitutional values. So that is uh, permissible. Asking them to adhere to constitutional values. Right. Anyone that else? That is why, you know, uh, in, the, in that case of... Um, what they call um, 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 people convicted cannot contest, etc., uh, etc. Et These are all affecting the political parties. Yes. Yeah. Anyone else, my dear friends? Anji Sardalji, please go ahead. Um. Somebody else can also ask anyone who is interested before we close the session. My dear friends. Okay. Yeah, get, no, no become public spirited persons. Uh, <laughs> no, yeah, no problem. You can yeah. take up the public right. spirit, uh, my dear friends who are joining me. You can take this public spirit also by getting people enrolled to this virtual course also. Um, uh, this is in a way you can tell your friends also that there is a facility available and you know without uh, um, much of a trouble you can enroll uh, it's not it's a very affordable uh, you know in in uh, foreign countries for a virtual court like this or a virtual education like this you have to pay through your uh, nose but this is a quite affordable thing so many of you some of you all of you rather can tell your friends also be they are lawyers or uh, non-lawyers also to avail this facility who wanted to learn law, be students or young lawyers also. Because, you know, in this platform, your professor Najiketa is bringing not only your teachers, academicians, but people like uh, from the retired side like me also. All people you know, have a wider vision. So that, you know, when you learn law, you, you are, your vision will be wider. Rather than, you know, in your law college, you go like this only. You know. Not like this. This is a wider virtual platform, you get a global vision of uh, what law is and what justice is and why do you want to become a lawyer? Why do you want to become a corporate lawyer? Why do you want to become uh, what you call litigation lawyer? Why do you want to become a chamber lawyer? Why do you want to become an executive? 
uh, all this, you know, you get a lot of wider vision. So uh, get a lot of people also into this movement. This is the first movement tested in the country by Professor Najigata. So that is something on public interest which you can take up. Otherwise, then through court. Right. Thank you so much. In thank fact, you. Sir, all the best. Yeah. God bless thank you, you all. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. Th thank you so much, sir. I really thank you know, that you could come and give your time. I am also thankful, for example, you know, some, some of the friends, some uh, of lawyers, uh, colleagues from academics have been joining. For example, on the screen, you could see Albin and then uh, there's Katyani. They both have been sir, working with me pro bono. Uh, even Lakshika was there asking questions for last over a month now. You know, as research assistants giving their services to uh, the virtual law school, you know, uh, assisting all our faculty, senior colleagues. So there are a lot of other friends who have joined me in this entire exercise. I thank everybody. And at the same time, sir, as part of the uh, PLEP, Professional Legal Education Program, I'm trying to bring in some best legal minds for extensive training on RTI also. And then there are a couple of professors who are going to come in the coming weeks from the US to, to teach some courses on legal ethics. So, so there are some of these exercises which I'm going to do. In fact, uh, this week and, and, and the week thereafter, I will be myself attending. I have uh, been invited as a guest to attend three to four classes in the US law schools to, to know that how are they functioning. So which I'm going to do one on uh, 17, then on 20th and then 24th. So they are going to be, you know, three days, uh, I'm going to be attending the classes in the US law schools through the virtual mode as I'm doing it now. Right. So that's how I'm also trying to expand my learning so that I can bring those kinds of best practices back in here and use the technology effectively for all my dear student friends. So thank you, my dear uh, you know, uh, students and thank you, sir, for joining us today. And uh, I look forward to your blessings all the time, sir. Thank you. All the best. God bless you all. Stay safe. Yeah. Healthy and blessed. Yeah. Have a good evening also. Yeah. yeah good evening, sir. Thank yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you, sir. You stay care and stay safe. Thank you, everyone.